And this is from Jeff Booth, our favorite guy, Jeff Booth. We're going to have him on the show one day. I guarantee it. But for now, we're just going to have to watch some of his clips. <laughs> but this is uh, a couple things within this. A couple things. Number one, he says a, a specific phrase that you're going to notice within the video, which ties into this channel and what we're doing here. But also, the, the main thesis here is that we have the ability to choose our world. We have the ability. Our thoughts, our actions, where we put our time, where we put our energy, that's the world that we create. So let's listen to Jeff here. He says it much better than me. So we'll give him the screen time. Here it is. This is a three minute clip, but very worthwhile. What is your opinion on the separation of money and state? How long is this going to take? Uh, what's your timeline on this? Do we have any, we have no idea what to compare it to. Uh, yeah. yeah. So a long time, but you don't have to wait. Nor does the person in Nigeria, nor does the person, you don't have to wait for your country to get it. You don't have to wait for anybody to get it. You can move. So I would, I would bet, Nico, that your life and what you do uh, looks a lot more positive than a, many of your friends measuring from Fiat World. And I'm going to wait for you to come back on just to answer that. Absolutely. 100% it does. Yes. So, so you're not waiting. You're already living in, uh, you're already living in the future. And it's getting and it's getting better and better for for you, and so when people people ask me all the time when will they're spending ninety percent of the time or ninety five percent of the time reinforcing clown world, I I kind of ask when for you, because that's what matters. And then the more and more people that move their time over, the more people see exactly what you're seeing versus your friends, because they're just measuring from an a system based on, on theft and you aren't. And so your life is getting better and better as a result of that and more hopeful uh, because, because of that. How long? Um, there's a whole bunch of people that if, if you pull up Bitcoin price in Argentina right now, um, that has, uh, that you'd see 55 million uh, uh, per Bitcoin. There's a whole bunch of people that still believe the Argentina peso still has value and they're measuring in, uh, in that. So, so if that's the way that the world works and they don't see it yet, then probably a long time. Because the other thing that that influences is every time those currencies devalue to the extent that they do, the U.S. dollar gets stronger and it extends the life of the U.S. dollar because those people think U.S. dollar is a good thing. And they go and try to save in U.S. dollars. When really what, you're, what the U.S. in this situation is doing is strip mining those populations from all of their productivity and and so if they don't see it yet and they haven't moved to bitcoin even though they didn't, anyone in that population could then then i suspect this is going to take a, a, a long time that, but it doesn't have to it, like the speed is driven by us the speed is driven by how much of our time we move into the new system and teach others. So the things like your show and all of the incredible people that are trying to spread this around the world so other people are seeing it, um, we're all connected through that. And the more connection we have, the, more, the, the world doesn't look like people look. If you go to all these countries and actually meet people, they look the same everywhere, same hope, same dreams, same. And you see that in Bitcoin and you see that in Bitcoin conferences, no matter where somebody is, we're all one. And so as you start to realize that and your time matters in the system, you start spending more time in your system, but you don't have to wait for anybody. Pretty powerful words there. Did you hear him say you're already living in the future? Have you heard of living in the future before? We're there already. We're there. We're already there. That's a crazy thing. If you're somebody who's learning about Bitcoin, if you're somebody who's buying Bitcoin, if you're somebody who's earning Bitcoin, buying things, selling things with Bitcoin, you're already living in the future. And there's a, in the Living in the Future show that we do a couple times a week, we've been listening to a fellow named Earl Nightingale, I think his name is. 
And he talks about the 95% of people and the 5% of people. And 95% of people all go the same direction. They do the same things. They're all competing against each other. It's not, it's a rat race, essentially. This was a hundred years ago. He's talking about this. And then you look at the 5% of people, people who are doing things differently, the people who are taking risks, the people who are creating and living in this world, that's a 5% of people. And I think that's a perfect representation of where we are in Bitcoin right now. So a couple things there. He talked about the US dollar and how Argentina's uh, Argentinians value the US dollar like it's like it is the currency. And so I talked about the fact that all these different countries, including the US, could roll out a CBDC. But as long as Bitcoin's there, it doesn't really matter because the world that we live in and the world that we've lived in for the last 100 years has been pegged to the US dollar. That's been the world reserve currency. So yes, countries can print money, but then their value goes down compared to the US dollar. But when the US dollar does it, nothing else is, that's the peg. That's what we're valuing everything in today is a illusionary currency by a government. That's the peg. They can do what they want with it. They can print as much. They can issue as much debt without our votes. So that's the peg that we have right now. So anything could happen. We could have all these CBDCs. We could have all these different cryptocurrencies. But as long as we have a solid foundation, a solid peg like Bitcoin, nothing else matters. That's the key. So the thing here. And we're going to we're going to talk about a few things because you know it's it's fun to talk about these things. It's fun to listen to Jeff Booth talk, but at the end of the day, we still need some actionable things that we can do. I'm going to take a couple questions here, but let's. Uh, oh, look at this. We got BTC Backpacker in the house. We got Cleaning Up Twelve, great YouTube channel. Bodhi, and yes, this is the famous quote from. Hayek, I, this was in the 80s. He said, all we can do is by some sly roundabout way, introduce something that they can't stop. We're not going to go to war with these people. We're not going to defeat them. All we can do is by some sly roundabout way, introduce something that they can't stop. That was before Bitcoin. Bodhi says, can you program your Bitcoin to something like a slow strat, a slow sat stream, sort of like an annuity, but self-controlled where you don't access your main stash? Yep, it's programmable. And people hear the word programmable and they think of being able to control people. And they that's, you know, CBDCs are also programmable, but it still gives you the ability to do things like that. And you can do things like inheritance stuff where you pass your Bitcoin on to your kids but they don't have access to it until they're 40 or something, or until they've watched a hundred episodes of the daily Bitcoin journey. <laughs> stuff like stuff like that you can do because it's programmable. Summer breeze. Good morning, my friend. <clears throat> Bodhi says smash the like that would be much appreciated. And we got Satoshi Nakamoto in the house. Look at that. Okay. And I must've missed a comment here, but Satoshi Nakamoto says, Someone mentioned Jones Plantation. You already know. Best movie ever that will never be played on mainstream media. Interesting. I've never heard of that. Let me write that one down. Jones Plantation. I'll go back to the original comment here too. Because we're live and we can do whatever the hell we want to. What did I miss? I think the problem is a lot of these... Faces look the same. A couple gray ones. Where is it? Oh, right here. Adrian Lee. Our guy says the Jones Plantation. Great movie. We all live on the Jones Plantation. Interesting. So it's probably the same thesis that she's talking about in that short clip then by the sounds of it. Smash like and subscribe. So wow. The daily Bitcoin journey is hitting some new all-time highs here. We got Satoshi in the in the channel and subscribe to the show. Never heard of this channel. This is amazing. Glad to have you here, my friend. Glad to have you. So here's what we can do. Here's what we can do. I got a couple things. So the first one that I want to mention is what, what can we do? Because if, if we actually want to get out of this, we'll call it the Jones Plantation. 
Let's say we want to get out of the Jones plantation. What do we do? What can we do? We have the ability to do it now. So the first thing that you should be doing is you should be supporting Bitcoin companies. And I don't know that there's a directory or anything out there that would be actually a smart idea. I, there are apps like that, I think, that already do that kind of stuff. But it would be nice just within like our Noster, within this community, if we had some sort of bi uh, business directory that accepts Bitcoin, I think that'd be a good place to start. So anyways, support Bitcoin companies. And that's why I wore the shirt today. 21 million shirt. I always wear my hoodie and my Navy hat. But I wanted to show this one off today. Look like a dummy there, but that's okay. It's a, it's a great shirt I got in the mail yesterday. It's from our buddy Eric from Juxtapose. He sells some really good Bitcoin merchandise. King Golf is going to be teaming up with him for a few different shirts. So I wanted to give a shout out to Eric for one, for this awesome shirt, 21 million with a little ghost. I bought it actually live on the show a couple weeks ago, paying with lightning. So you have to support Bitcoin companies because what we want to do here is we want to, we have the Bitcoin now. We don't want to sell it for fiat, which will eventually flow to BlackRock. We want to be buying and selling things with Bitcoin. So then whoever we're buying from, they're getting the Bitcoin. BlackRock's not getting the Bitcoin. So support Bitcoin companies. I also, there's a sponsor of the show called Gray Ridge Coffee. They're a local company from Manitoba here. They roast their own beans here in Manitoba. The coffee is amazing. Drink it every day. They're a sponsor of the show. Both of these links, actually, there's a little discount code in the description. Everything you ever need to know about the show, you can find in the description below. But it's called Juxtapose. That's where this shirt is from. That's where we're going to have some King Golf stuff as well on there. So you can use a discount code. I think you get 10% off or free shipping if you pay in Bitcoin. And then with Grey Ridge, you actually get 25% off their, their coffee. And it's made here in Canada, roasted here in Manitoba. And he's a Bitcoiner. He accepts Bitcoin on the site. And he's been very helpful in my journey to get here. And we're actually teaming up on something pretty special this summer, which we're going to hear more about someday. So there's the two support Bitcoin companies. There's a ton out there. And one other thing on that, one other thing on that. Is that if you are somebody who, sorry, I'm kind of going down a few different places here and there, I'm trying to keep up with the chat too. But um, morning, Danny. Keep it real. We're trying here. We're trying. Summer Breeze says, Bitcoin can't be a currency. If you don't print money, liquid dries up. Economy collapses. Bitcoin will be a niche store of value, maybe 50 trillion. That's an interesting theory. Interesting theory for sure. If you don't print money, I, but the, th the thing that I would argue there is that you don't need to print money. You just add decimal places. So even though the, the actual amount doesn't increase, you just cut it into smaller slivers. You, you fractionalize it, you divide it further. So I think that that's a, a theory that we've been taught is that you need inflation in the economy. I don't, I don't, I don't agree with that theory. I think that if you have Bitcoin as the peg, and then you can keep expanding it. You keep moving the decimal places as more and more people show up there. The exact same thing happened with land in the new world here. People showed up. You could get a whole town worth of land for like a dollar. And as more, more people showed up, they started dividing that land into sections, half sections, quarter sections, uh, acres, lots. They didn't print more land. They just divide it up. And as more and more people showed up, the value of it went up and they kept moving the measurement of that land. So it's a good theory. I disagree with it, but that's okay. That's what the show is about. So anyways, what I was saying there was that you don't have to be a Bitcoin company to be part of this economy. What you could do is, is what take a good hard look at what you do every day. What do you like doing and how could you earn Bitcoin for that? And the one thing I think that a lot of people are sleeping on right now in Bitcoin is starting a business. You don't have to go through the typical rails, that whole thing, that all that bullshit. Start, start a business, whatever it is that you do, and start promoting yourself to Bitcoiners. So use Noster. 
use things like this show. Like this is the most underpriced <laughs> opportunity out there. You could literally send in a boost for a hundred sats on fountain. I'll read your message, whatever it is. You could say, I'm a, a bookkeeper who wants to start earning Bitcoin. This is how you can get a hold of me. Like this show reaches, you know, a fair amount of, of people and Bitcoiners. If you want your audience to be, if you want people paying you in Bitcoin, you have to get in front of Bitcoiners. And the cheapest people to get in front of right now are Bitcoiners. It's like an absolute no brainer. So that's one, support Bitcoin companies. Number two, support Bitcoin channels. As Jeff Booth said, the people who are out there educating people and having discussions about Bitcoin, we have to be supporting them. And I don't ask for much on the show. I really don't. Show up every morning, we talk about Bitcoin. I don't ask for a whole lot. But, and you're already here, you're already supporting this channel. But what you can do is start looking at other YouTube channels. You can start liking their videos. You can start commenting on their videos because it actually, it goes a long way. And not only like their actual ability to earn a living, but the motivation aspect of that. If they're putting out this, these good Bitcoin videos and nobody's showing up, nobody's liking it, they're going to stop doing it. And that's, count, that's counteractive to what we want to be doing here. We want to be growing, not shrinking. So anything that you can do without, you know, you don't have to spend money, but you can do things like commenting, sharing, liking, stuff like that. It actually goes a really long way. So support Bitcoin channels. The next one here, I see third. I see thirty some odd people on the, the the streams here on YouTube. Use Bitcoin tech. Big shout out to everybody who's on Zap.stream right now. We have to be using these things, otherwise they're going to go away. We have to be using these things, like Noster, like. Don't wait to get set up on Noster. It's so fucking easy to download an application, create a private and public key pair and start posting on there. Spend less time on Twitter, more time on Noster. Less time on YouTube, more time on zap.stream. Like we have to be doing this. <laughs> I don't mean to get fired up here, but these people are building things like zap.stream, like Noster, and you're still spending all of your time in the old world on Twitter, on YouTube and earning fiat when you can just slowly move over to this. We have to start using these Bitcoin platforms, Bitcoin applications. Next one here, ask businesses if you can pay in Bitcoin. Very simple to do. And a, a good way to do this is, you know, you go to a restaurant in your town, you don't have to ask to pay in Bitcoin. But just ask the waitress, can I tip you in Bitcoin? And still give her a tip in cash. Like that's why I carry around cash and I have Bitcoin on a Phoenix or a Wallet of Satoshi. And then they say, I don't know what Bitcoin is. I've heard of it. I have none of it. They download an app. You send them Bitcoin. You give them a tip. All of a sudden you've created a new Bitcoiner. They're going to go home. They're going to tell some friends that they have Bitcoin. They're going to start paying a little more attention to Bitcoin. Every month they're going to open up their Wallet of Satoshi and see what their Bitcoin's worth now. That's how you create new Bitcoiners. And the last one here, the last one, Ballsy Golf over in Zap.stream. Actually, I'm going to give Craig a Zap for that, for sharing that resource on there. And I'm going to give Ballsy Golf a little Zap here as well. Because his comment was, We'll try and tell two people who will tell two people to grow this channel. That's how it happens. That's how exponential growth happens. But we have to be the ones, we're the ones who are here now. We have to be the ones who kickstart this whole thing. Nobody else is going to do it for us. We are the ones in charge here. We create the world that we want to live in. And the last one here. <clears throat> Uh, Bodhi says, if you're a business owner, 80% of the people who want to do business with you don't know about it yet. That's a great quote. And if you were, Bodhi, if you were on Zap.stream, I think you are sometimes, but if you were, I would zap you for that. <laughs> uh, what did Satoshi Nakamoto say? 
Yeah. The only part with your Bitcoin, if you don't know, is the superior asset. Agreed. Okay. So this is what uh, the last thing I want to say here. So we talked about the Bitcoin companies. We got juxtaposed here. They got great Bitcoin gear. Love the shirt. This is going to be my most worn t-shirt for sure. 21 million. And you're like a walking billboard. People see 21 million. They might ask you about it. Or they might just think about it next time they hear 21 million. They think, oh yeah, I saw some bozo wearing a 21 million shirt with a ghost on it. We got Grey Ridge Coffee, the best coffee out there. 25% off using the code. I think it's King in the description. But support these people. Support them if you can. And the last business I wanted to talk about here. Actually, I'll talk about this first. But you have to create a plan. You have to create a strategy for yourself because it's going to look different for everybody. And I'm not asking you to leave your job today, call your boss and say, I just watched this video of Jeff Booth talking about spending too much time in the fiat world. I'm out. I quit. <laughs> you don't need to do that. Just start slowly every day moving into this new system, but you have to have a plan. And part of that plan is actually going to be moving your capital. If you're somebody who's, let's say, 30, 40, 50, 60 years old, you're going to have a ton of capital in that old world, in that old system. And you're, you're not just going to decide one day that you're going to take it all out and you're going to buy Bitcoin with it because you're going to get hammered with tax. Because all of that capital is in a system where they know exactly who it belongs to, you. And so if you just take that out, you're going to pay a shitload of fees. You're going to pay a shitload of tax and it's going to hurt. You're going to waste a lot of your energy that you put into earning that. So what you need to do is you need to create a plan and a strategy for yourself to slowly exit that system. You're not going to do it in a day. You're not going to do it in a year. But over a couple of years, if you understand taxes, if you understand that kind of stuff, maybe you take a quarter out this year. Maybe you had a good business year, so you only take a quarter out. Next year, you take half out and you can do a little bit less in terms of earning for your business. Or maybe you get some cash, maybe some Bitcoin that's not on your tax return. But you need a strategy in terms of withdrawing that capital from that system and putting it into the new system of Bitcoin. And you have to have a plan in place. So let's say you do a quarter, you do half next year, and then the year after that, you take the other quarter. And then by that time, you're all the way out of that system. It's all in Bitcoin. You maximize your taxes by doing that because your tax is based on your income every year. And so if you can find a way to split that out, it just makes more sense. You'll get more Bitcoin out of it. Carl says, I was hoping to be sitting on a tropical beach drinking my drink out of a pineapple by now. <laughs> uh, that's good stuff. Well, you know, stick around for a while. Start earning some Bitcoin. Start building your life in a way to, to do that. And it won't be very long. Letha says, I like the Bitcoin shirt that says, did you just assume my tender? <laughs> I haven't seen that one. Okay, so let's round things out. Big shout out to Daniel for the zap over on zap.stream, 1,000 sats. And a shout out to My Path to Fire for 100 sats over on zap.stream. I very much appreciate everybody for being over there and for the people who are zapping. The goal today was for some good karma today. So those two will have some great karma today. Okay, so let's uh, let's round this out. The one thing I want to say with that is that because most people, even Bitcoiners, most people are pretty unfamiliar with how taxes work, how financial planning works. And even though you are in Bitcoin in this world, if you still have some capital in that world that you want to get out in the most efficient and effective way, consider getting a financial advisor. And I know that goes against a lot of Bitcoiners views, but there are financial advisors out there who actually do this and help people move capital out of that system and into Bitcoin, either through an ETF micro strategy or actual self custody of it. And I happen to know a guy. There are very few financial advisors out there who are embracing Bitcoin, teaching their clients about it and helping people move from the, their capital from the old system into the new system. And I happen to know one of them. So big shout out to Chrysler for Parkview Private Wealth. If you are somebody who has a bunch of money in the old system, if you're here in Canada and you want to move that over time, 
not all at once, but over time in the most efficient way possible, get in touch with me and I'll put you in touch with Chrysler and we'll figure out a plan how to do that. I can help or he can do it, but either way we can do that. But you have to have a plan in place. And so even if you just go to Chrysler and say, this is what I have, this is where I want to go. He'll start you out on that plan. That's a very good starting point for your plan because that's going to kind of dictate how you do things in your life for the next couple of years. Because the worst thing that you can do is decide that you want to move out of the system today. You quit your job. You take all your money out. You pay a bunch of fees. You pay a bunch of tax. That's the worst thing that you can do. So get a plan in place. If you need somebody to help you out with that, get in touch. We can do it. It's what we love to do. It's what we're here to do. So with that, let's uh, let's round things out for today. There we go. Somebody also sent 420 sats, and I don't know how that's happening on here. 